All right. Good morning. This is Nicole Whitlock with Ecom Sellers, and this is the daily Ecom planning session. So today's topic is becoming a full-time Shopify seller. What is it going to take to become a full-time seller? So with that, my name is Nicole Whitlock, and my passion is helping people on their e-commerce journey, helping them to get organized, get focused, get consistent in their e-commerce business. If that's you, I'm here for you. You'll be given the opportunity to schedule a free 20-minute coaching session. Let's talk about your business. Let's put together a game plan. It's the last day of January. So let's make sure you got a 2023 plan that you've got in place to be able to rock and roll. So with that, what we're going to do first is I'm going to let you know we are live on Clubhouse. We're also live in the e-commerce planning Facebook group. This is your opportunity to go download the daily, the weekly, and the monthly e planning checklist. If you didn't get a chance to go download the checklist um, before now, definitely go to the e-commerce planning Facebook group. Click on the menu item for files and then download the daily, weekly, and monthly. Um, we performed the or had the weekly planning checklist uh, session on Saturday. So if you want to go back and listen to that replay, it's in the e-commerce planning Facebook group. And then we also had the monthly planning session on Sunday. So if you don't have your game plan put together for February or the rest of first quarter, go back and listen to that replay. So you have the opportunity to put together a strong game plan so you can make progress on your business because planning is one of the keys to becoming a full-time seller anywhere, consistency and planning. So with that, let's go ahead and get into today's topic. And then after that, we will go over the daily planning checklist. We're live on Clubhouse. So if you want to continue the conversation afterwards, then you can jump on uh, to Clubhouse and join the e-commerce Ecom Sellers uh, Club. So with that, becoming a full-time Shopify seller is a little more involved than it is to be a full-time seller on Amazon or eBay or Walmart or Etsy. And the reason is because those platforms, people know. People know what Amazon's platform is and what they can buy there. They know what Walmart is and what they can buy there. They also know the other platforms, uh, Etsy, eBay, many of the other mobile apps. They know what they can buy there. With Shopify, your domain does not say Shopify.com. It's your own domain. So you have to drive your own traffic. So that's one of the things. It's really just a website builder. It's a website builder where you can sell physical products. You can also sell services. Um, and that is really what it is. So everything around driving traffic and awareness comes from the work you invest. So you have to be prepared for that from the jump. You have to know that. So the assumption is, is that you at least know what Shopify is and maybe that you've at least created a store. If not, you got to go set that up first. But the second thing is, as you're thinking about making this your full-time gig, Here's some other things you have to think about or you have to put into place. One, you do have to learn what the platform offers. There's so many different Shopify apps and features and functionality, and it gives you the opportunity to customize the customer experience and also customize your store to some extent based on the templates. So you want to know what templates are available to you, you or themes, sorry. You want to know what themes are available to you. You also want to know, you know what features and functionality you have available that's free and which ones are paid. So you need to be aware of that up front. You also need to know what's prohibited on Shopify. You don't want to get yourself in trouble if you're making this your full-time gig. So definitely go learn what's prohibited um, with that so that that way you don't have any problems. Um, you know, other things you want to know with any other guidelines that you may have to follow, the reports, you know, uh, what's involved in creating a listing. So, that, you know, Shopify, again, is a website builder. This would apply if you were creating a Wix store, or a Weebly store, if you were doing a WooCommerce, you're doing BigCommerce, like whatever website builder store that you're creating, you're still going to have to figure out a lot of things because no one knows your domain. No one knows your brand. And so you're starting from scratch. The next is you're going to have to obtain some level of capital investment. And the reason is because 
unlike with Amazon or eBay, like you can get started as an Amazon seller for 50 bucks and you can get started with Walmart and eBay and Etsy for 50 bucks. And yes, you can create a Shopify store for free for the first two weeks and then you got to pay, but you still have to drive traffic. You're going to have to have some money to invest in inventory. And if you're doing print on demand, then you that's one of the easiest ways to get started on Shopify. So then that way you don't have to spend any money out of pocket upfront, significant money out of pocket. But if you got to acquire some inventory, um, you're going to have to be prepared for that. If you're going to do drop shipping, again, another way to get started, but you're still going to have to have some cash flow in order to do drop shipping. So again, you need to have some money before you start. Unlike some of the other platforms where, again, brand awareness already exists for Amazon. So people know what they can buy there. Um, you're going to have to invest a little bit of cap, uh, capital, a little bit of money into driving traffic. The next you're going to need to create a marketing plan and strategy. This is paid marketing, uh, paid traffic, campaigns, email marketing, video marketing, social media marketing, creating partnerships, doing promotions, all the things you need to do to drive traffic. Because again, none of that exists uh, initially. So, you know, if you've already got some capital to invest, that's fantastic. If you are at a place where, you know, you've got a marketing plan put together, or maybe now that I've kind of mentioned these, something to think about, but you do have to be prepared. What's going to be your paid marketing plan and what's going to be your campaign plan and what's going to be your email plan? Like what are the, what's your strategy going to be to get as much traffic to, uh, your domain, your URL as possible. Uh, some of it, you know, you can do some of it for free because social media allows you to promote your stuff. So you just have to go viral. So people will know who, who you are, what you are, or you're going to have to stay the course and be consistent and just get better at your craft over time. But the point is you got to drive some traffic and there's many different ways in which you can do that. And a lot of it for most sellers is paid. The next is you need to build and establish your brand. That's, you know, figuring out everything that's associated with your brand, brand your color, your logo, your look and feel of your site, um, you know, your products that you ship to your customer, whatever it is that you're going to sell. You're going to figure out all of that. And so build out your brand, um, build and establish your brand so that you have uh, at least a, an awareness because that's ultimately at the end of the day, you're working to build a brand on the platform. Okay. Next, you want to master the art of marketing, market research, and product research. The reason is because you got to figure out what your niche is, what your specialty is going to be. So you got to master the art of that market research, product research, just research in general. You got to find, figure out who is this product for, what problem does it solve for them, what uh, you know, what are the the things that I need to say and do to get this, get the avatar for this product to be able to come out of their pocket and do that impulse buy. <laughs> so again, you need to figure out which products to sell and maybe which products to bundle together and how to present those products in front of your customer. Okay. So identify your niche or your niches that you're going to go into and figure out what that's going to look like for you as you become full-time. Again, we're assuming that you started with, you created a store. Maybe you've already bought the domain. Now you've got to figure out how to drive traffic. Now, there are some things prior to that. If you haven't built your store and you haven't done your domain, there's a whole nother step of things to do prior to that. But if you've already gotten to that place and you want to make this your full-time gig, then you're at this place where you're going to have to you know, buckle down on your niche and, uh, you know, do some really good product research so you know how to present this product or the solution to your avatar. Next, you do need to find some really good suppliers, reliable, reputable suppliers that will help guarantee that your product will get to your customer in a timely manner and intact. You want to find some quality products, okay? So you need good suppliers and quality products. I didn't write the words quality products, but I should have. So... <laughs> <laughs> because you don't want to have to deal with a bunch of returns. You really don't. You don't want that to be your problem. Next, you need to know your numbers. On any platform, you really need to know your numbers. You need to know what your sales stats are, your income requirements, your income potential, your cash flow. So how do you figure out your income potential? Well, we, we I've done a couple of different workshops. And, you know, you want to go out there and do, again, as you're doing that product research, 
when you do the product research, that's when you're going to determine what the income potential is for that product or products. So if you've never participated in any of the other workshops, you can definitely sign up under Ecom Sellers Mastery or Ecom Sellers Academy. So you can learn how to do effective product research and figure out what the income potential is for a specific product. That's no guarantee that it, that's what it'll be for you because you still have more work to do. But it is an opportunity to see what is potentially possible based on the fact that if you put this product in front of the right audience, have the right marketing, you could get the sales that you're looking for over time. So know your numbers, learn your numbers, get better at your numbers, monitor your numbers, stay on top of your numbers. Next is you need to learn how to create a good and optimized listing. So the key to that, um, and also, so this can drive organic traffic. Traffic. So, you know, good listings comprise of, of course, images, really good images, titles, description. Those um, are keys. And then the fact that in the description, it solves a problem or it presents itself in front of the right audience. So the words and the way it's phrased and all of that. So all of that matters when it comes to this. And again, there's some extra steps before this because your domain matters, your branding matters and figuring out what your domain should be. We've got a whole Shopify workshop on that. Then um, next is you need to develop and implement a good customer service and fulfillment strategy. Look, you are the customer service. You are the person that has to make sure that the order gets fulfilled, whether you're doing drop shipping or print on demand, or whether you're selling physical products of your own. You still have to make sure that the orders get to the customer in a timely manner. So that's going to be extremely important. So you need to figure out what your customer service strategy is going to be. What are you going to do to make sure that, you know, your customers are happy with the product? What are you going to do to help drive, you know, reviews? What are you going to do to help increase brand awareness? What kind of offers are you going to drive to those customers who actually engage with your site? What are those things you're going to do? And again, that's part of knowing what's available to you um, on Shopify, what apps some of them are paid. Some of them are free. Next, you need to establish routines. You need to build a schedule. Um, a schedule around running your store, running your business. A schedule around all of the activities that will help you to be successful as a seller. So you need to figure out, you know, your man hours, how many hours you're going to invest in your business because you are going to be doing just a little bit more. You know, people know who Amazon is. They don't know who you are. They don't know your store. They don't know your brand. So you've got to find your audience and then you've got to do everything you can to consistently maintain or stay engaged with that audience. So you need to build routines. You need to build a schedule so that you're staying on top of your business and you need to be organized. You need to stay consistent. In some cases, you need to outsource if you've got the capital. There may be pieces of your business operations that you may be able to outsource to a piece of software, to a VA, or to a service. So there may be things you outsource and there may be things you don't outsource or you may not even do any outsourcing. You may run your store 100% yourself. And where possible, you need to always look for opportunities to improve efficiency, to streamline your operations so that things go as much as possible on autopilot. You can set up a Shopify store where it is significantly on autopilot, but you need to know all the upfront investment in time and resources that it's going to take to get to that place where, you know, you spend X number of hours in your Shopify store. Just know that there's work to be done. So I don't want you to think it'll be 100% on autopilot. You do have to monitor what's happening. But again, you need to have a game plan for all that. And then next, you need to embrace the administrative side of your business and pay attention to the data. What's happening with the traffic? Where is the traffic coming from? What's your traffic source? Um, figuring out who your avatar is, who, where do you want to do paid traffic? Are you going to go do Google ads? What are you going to do? Where are you going to drive that traffic from so that people can find your product? So I hope this is helpful. I hope you use it to determine whether or not becoming, you know, using Shopify to be, make it your full-time e-commerce gig is, is for you. Or if you want to stick with some of the other platforms first, get your feet wet, get consistent there before you venture off. Now, if you have a private label brand, uh, you know, 
creating your own Shopify store is great. You can also, you know, increase your um, brand awareness on the platforms itself, on the other selling marketplaces. So figure out what your strategy and approach is going to be. Figure out if you have the time and the bandwidth to do all the upfront work that's going to be required to make your Shopify work for you and the ongoing uh, work that's going to be required to sustain that uh, momentum in your business. So again, I hope this is helpful for you. Feel free to go back and look at the other uh, full-time seller series. Uh, we've gone through Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Shopify, uh, Walmart. We've gone through all of those. And so again, Shopify is one more, giving you the opportunity. If you want to make this your full-time gig in 2023, this is laying the foundation for the things that you need to do. All right. So share this out with a friend, let somebody else know about the series, and then tune in for the next one in the series tomorrow. All right, so if you're ready to turn up the dial in your business and get laser focused, then this is the time to do it. It's the end of January. Let's go ahead and get that econ planner. You need the econ planner. It is the ultimate e-commerce planner. It was created for sellers by sellers. You can go to myeconplanner.com. Again, myeconplanner.com to get your 2023 e-commerce planner. Use it to help you to get organized, get focused, get consistent in 2023 to achieve your goals. If you established your goals, let's work on achieving those. The econ planner can help you do that. So go to myeconplanner.com. In addition to that, if you'd like to schedule a free coaching session, you can go to um, ecomsellers.com, click on free resources and schedule your free 20 minute coaching session by going to ecomsellers.com and clicking on free resources to schedule your free 20 minute coaching session. So with that, I want to invite you um, to join Ecom Sellers Academy if you are looking for some support on your e-commerce journey. It's terribly affordable. It's $17.99 a month. You gain access to a library of over 200 plus training videos, an arbitrage leads list every single week, a wholesale leads list every single week. In addition to that, you get a live weekly training and live Q&A along with an opportunity to have a free coaching session every quarter. So go to ecomsellersacademy.com. If you sign up for the lifetime, you will get um, a free e-commerce planner. So sign up for the lifetime and go get yourself an e-commerce planner today. So now it's time to go through the daily econ planning checklist. If you didn't already download it, go download it right now. And once you download it, it gives you an opportunity to uh, follow along as we begin the process of talking about becoming um, consistent in your business and getting organized. After you've downloaded the checklist and we go through the review, if you want to continue the conversation, we're over on Clubhouse. You can join the Ecom Sellers Club so that we can continue the conversation. You can unmute yourself and let's talk about your business. Let's talk about your platform. Let's talk about what you're selling. Let's talk about what you're not selling. Let's talk about your 2023 game plan. So with that, let's go over and look at the daily econ planning checklist. Also, just wanted to let you know that starting on the 1st, we're only going to be broadcasting in the e-commerce planning Facebook group, along with my page and also the fan pages. So if you wanted to continue to watch the daily econ planning sessions, you have to go to the Ecom Sellers Academy fan page. Go ahead and like that page now. Um, the Ecom Seller Summit fan page e-commerce planning Facebook group, the e-com planner fan page, Nicole Whitlock fan page. Go to those fan pages because we will be posting directly on those fan pages and sharing that into the e-commerce planning Facebook uh, groups uh, instead of broadcasting directly in there. So with that, this is, this is the time in which we go over the daily planning checklist. So there's three things in which we do. The first thing that we do is the night before we have activities that we engage in that are going to help set us up for success for tomorrow. The next thing is what we do in the morning right now. What are we doing today to become successful or become a successful seller? And then last but not least, we do some advanced planning. What are those things that are going to be interruptions or disruptions in our business and in our routines that are going to impact us? So those are the three things that we're going to focus on. So let's talk about the first one. What are the things that we do the night before? Well, the night before, what we're going to do is we're going to review or rate our day. We're going to go through what our checklist and see, go and look at our checklist and see what we had planned for the day and how much progress did we make towards those plans. 
we didn't make any progress towards those plans, hey, we're going to celebrate the success of the things we did get done. And we're going to either decide we're going to carry it forward to tomorrow or to next week or to next month. So celebrate what you did get done. Don't beat yourself up. Learn from your mistakes. We're going to, and then not necessarily mistakes, just learn why you weren't able to um, achieve everything that was on your list. Maybe you built an aggressive schedule for the day, or maybe you had a lot of disruptions and interruptions, or maybe you got distracted because sometimes that happens. So we're going to talk about what you can do to uh, stay on track as much as possible. So go through and review, review or rate your day, figure out how you did with your schedule. And again, celebrate your wins. Number two is that we're going to update our daily tracking stats. This is the number of listings we created, the sales we had, um, how many hours we actually worked in our business, what were our expenses, our mileage. Like there's a whole bunch of different things. There's a bunch of different fields that are inside that My Econ Planner. And so we're going to update those stats, the stats that are going to help us to maintain and sustain the consistency we're working to build in our business. So we're going to go update those stats. Next, we're going to go and review our online calendars for tomorrow, our online calendars for our personal life, for our business and for work. So for me, I literally had a bunch of stuff that I needed to get done yesterday and today, but the ice storm prevented me from doing that. So I had to move all that stuff. So that meant I got to adjust my schedule. And so again, look at your calendar because sometimes you have appointments, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, stuff you have to get done for the car, stuff you have to do for your family, all that stuff. And so look at your online calendar so you're not surprised when you wake up in the morning and you can have a productive day, hopefully, based on what you do. Last but not least, we're going to build a schedule, a draft schedule for tomorrow. So that's today's schedule, but we're going to build a draft schedule before we go to bed. That's going to lay the foundation of what we plan on and focusing on where we plan on investing our energy and our time so that we can make progress in our life and in our business. So go and build your schedule. Identify the main thing that if nothing else goes right tomorrow, what is the main thing that needs to get done today no matter what? In addition to that, you know, when you're writing out that schedule, don't just write out things for your business. God gives us 24 hours in the day. So what are you doing with your 24 hours? You're not just working on your business 24 hours. Hopefully you're sleeping for anywhere from six to eight hours. But in addition to that, you're probably working in your business anywhere from four to six or eight hours. So what are you doing with that other time? There's some things you need to do with your family. There's things you need to do for your household. There's other things that you do. Maybe you meditate every morning. Maybe you get up and work out, whatever it happens to be. So make sure it's an inclusive schedule if it makes sense for you now. Here's how you determine if it makes sense for you. If you're a person that's really organized and you have an established routine that you are very uh, focused on, committed to, very stringent about, like you don't deviate from it, then writing out a detailed daily schedule may not be for you. Maybe you just need to write down your top five for the day, the things you're going to focus on. Because if you've been executing the schedule, your routine flawlessly and extremely consistently, then again, writing it out may not be for you. But if you're a person, you lose track of time, you don't know what you got done today, you can't figure out what progress you made on anything, um, you get distracted easily by TikTok, Netflix, whatever it happens to be, and you don't make any progress in your life and your business, you probably need a detailed schedule so you can move yourself along throughout the day and focus on other things and get stuff done. So you need to decide which personality are you? Are you really... Uh, focus and have established routines that serve your life and your business well, and you really just need to identify your top five for the day, fantastic. Do that. But if you're a person that loses track of time, you can't figure out where you invested time or wasted time. You don't know what you got done today. You can't figure out why you're not making any progress in anything. You're like a month from now and you're going, what did I even do in the month of January? Like, okay. Then you probably need a detailed schedule to help get you on track, help you stay on track, um, something that you can follow and pay attention to on a regular basis. So you decide which one you are. Okay. So then the next thing is the morning of. The first thing in the morning right now, what we're going to do is we're going to re-review yesterday. We're going to reassess yesterday. So that, that way we can make a note of maybe some patterns that we weren't paying attention to before. And we can work, use that information to be, build a better schedule in the future. So the goal is always to improve. 
So maybe you need to build a less aggressive schedule. Maybe you had 50 things on the list and you need to drill it down to 20. Or maybe you had five things on the list and you need to ratchet it up to 20. So you need to decide. Um, but you definitely want to push yourself, stretch yourself every single day. It's all about growth as you continue to get older in life. It's all about growth and getting better. Then the next thing is to review and update your weekly priorities and your weekly habits. So update your weekly priorities. What are the priorities that you have established for this week, knowing that this is the last day of January and what do you have to kickstart February and what are the habits that you're working to track so that you know where you stand as far as the progress that you're making towards your habits. Typically habits are things that you establish for a minimum of 30 days, not something that you establish for one week if you're working to build a habit or you're tracking habits. Um, next is to glance at your plan for the month. So January. Go look at what you had listed for your January goals. What were your income producing goals? What were your top goals? What were your admin goals? What were your marketing goals? What were your goals for the month of January? And did you meet them? If not, you might need to make some adjustments for today and finish strong and go hard in the paint. <laughs> Maybe that's what you do today. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and review today's schedule. Maybe you need to rewrite it based off of the stuff we just talked about. Maybe you need to revisit it. What's the main thing? And rewrite today. And if if you don't have to rewrite it, great. Just go ahead and read it out loud. Speak it into existence so you're ready to rock and roll. If you need to rewrite it, then rewrite it, meditate on it, and then speak it out loud so you're ready to rock and roll. The goal is to use that to help you to get on track and stay on track whenever you get derailed throughout the day and get distracted and get pulled away. And last but not least, we're going to build a draft schedule for tomorrow. So we're going to build a draft schedule for tomorrow so that you have a game plan and something to think about and meditate on. You're going to, of course, re-review it tonight and rewrite it if you need to so that you're ready to rock and roll tomorrow. So the last piece of this is advanced planning This for those disruptions, those interruptions, those things that are going to impact your ability to maintain or sustain the momentum you're working to build in your business and in your life. This past Sunday, um, I visited a church that I don't normally visit, and the pastor was so on point when he was talking about procrastination. He was talking about what happens at the beginning of the year. He's like, people start off the beginning of the year and they start strong and then they fizzle out. <laughs> Don't let this be your year where you start strong and then you fizzle out because one little thing derailed you and then you weren't ever able to recover or get your train back on the tracks. The goal is to stay on your horse or to keep, <laughs> keep your train on the tracks. So what are those things that are impacting your ability or could potentially impact your ability to stay focused, stay committed, stay consistent to this routine that you're working to establish? Don't start strong and fizzle out. Start strong and stay strong. Stay consistent. <laughs> Work on that. Do everything that you can. Fight the power. Fight the power <laughs> to stay to stay consistent, to stay focused, to stay committed to your game plan. Don't allow every little possible excuse to be the excuse that causes you to go, you know what? I started off 2023 strong, but I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened in 2023. So don't let this be the situation for you. Finish strong for 2023. So in order to do that, make sure you're putting game plans in place for things that are going to impact your ability to maintain or sustain your momentum. So if it's something where you're just going to have a, an appointment in the morning or afternoon and that's normally your work time, then move the activity that you need to do during that time. Let's say you're listing in the morning, but you have a doctor's appointment. And that's the only time the doctor can see you. Then move that activity to the afternoon. Commit to doing that. Even if you have to scale back, if you're used to creating 10 listings a day, but something happens, at least at a minimum, create one listing. So you at least engage in the activity of creating a listing, period. So... Do as much as you can to minimize those disruptions, those things that are going to cause you to be 100% derailed. And you're going to look back on your schedule and your life in July and go, what happened? I started strong. I could be somewhere else by now if I had just maintained that momentum. So put things in place, move things out of the way, make adjustments so that that way you can 
maintain and sustain that momentum. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you use it to become successful in your e-commerce business. Um, my name is Nicole Whitlock and my passion is helping people on their e-commerce journey, helping them to get organized, get focused, get consistent. And if that's you, you can schedule a free 20 minute coaching session by going to ecomsellers.com, clicking on free resources and scheduling a free 20 minute coaching session there. In addition to that, I encourage you to get the My Ecom Planner. It was created for sellers by sellers. It's the ultimate e-commerce planner. Go to myecomplanner.com. And last but not least, if you need some support on your e-commerce journey, join Ecom Sellers Academy. It's terribly affordable. We'd love to help support you on your e-commerce journey. With that, we're still live on Clubhouse. So we're going to wrap it up um, everywhere else. If you want to continue the conversation, join me on Clubhouse. Go to the Ecom Sellers Club. And let's continue the conversation. So with that, I hope that you have an extremely focused highly profitable and extremely whoops i said that all out of order <laughs> i hope that you have an extremely blessed ex- very focused and highly profitable day and we're going to say goodbye for now bye y'all you have a wonderful one <laughs>